It's gonna be clear tonight, so it's time to collimate this Dobsonian telescope. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about collimating your Dobsonian telescope. I'm going to be collimating my Orion 10 inch Dobsonian, but everything that I say would apply to any Newtonian reflector telescope because all reflector telescopes have to be collimated. Collimation just means lining up your secondary mirror with your primary mirror in order to get the best focus possible. And you have to check it from time to time on all reflectors and make adjustments occasionally. So there are four ways to collimate a Newtonian reflector or Dobsonian. And I'm going to be discussing three of the ways you can do during the day. And that is you can collimate with a simple collimation cap. You can collimate with a Cheshire collimator like this one I got from Astromania. And you can collimate with a laser collimator like this one also bought from Astromania. And then the fourth way I will not be covering, but just briefly, it's done at night with a bright star. You point your telescope at a magnitude two star at a high magnification and you defocus until you can see the central obstruction and the spider veins and they should be in the center of the circle made by the airy disk of the star. If it's not concentric circles, then it's not properly collimated and you have to make adjustments to the primary mirror until it's centered. That's how you do it at night, but we're going to do it during the day. I'll start with the collimation cap. So take your dust cap off the front and you'll see the spider veins and the primary obstruction where it holds the secondary mirror in place. And that's the secondary mirror right there. The primary mirror on a reflector is at the back of a telescope here. But always collimate by starting with your secondary mirror before you go to the primary mirror. So take out your eyepiece and put your collimation cap in the focuser. The collimation cap has a small opening and the purpose is to focus your eye over the focuser. And when you look into the collimation cap, you're going to see the reflection of the primary mirror in the secondary mirror. And what you're looking for here is don't worry about the primary mirror for the time being because first we want to make sure that the secondary mirror is lined up. You should be able to see the clips that hold the primary mirror. You should be able to see all four of them if the secondary mirror is dead center of the focuser. And mine is. I can see that the primary <laughs> needs adjustment, but right now we just want to make sure that the secondary mirror is in the center and also that the tilt is correct. Mine appears correct. However, if it's not, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and Orion gives you a collimation cap and they give you a two millimeter hex wrench, which you only need these two things for the secondary mirror adjustments, if any are needed. They come factory adjusted and you rarely need to make adjustments after the first time if you may need to make any. But what you do is you use the Phillips head screwdriver to loosen this screw in the center. And then use the two millimeter hex wrench to make very small adjustments to these three hex screws until the secondary mirror, mirror is in the center. If it's too far forward, 
you want to turn one way to make it go back and if it's too far back you turn the other way to make it come forward until it's dead center then you don't need the Phillips head or the two millimeter hex wrench any longer because the next step is to adjust the primary mirror now this part collimation caps are great they're cheap they're easy to use but the only drawback is you have to keep going back and forth because this is too long for me to see what's going on in here but what we're going to do is i already looked in here and i see that the primary mirror has a dot in the center and that's your reference point for the center of the primary mirror they they come from the factory like that to help with collimation and i can see that mine is not in the center so the goal is to get the circle on the primary mirror in the bullseye of the collimation cap so to do that on the back of the telescope there'll be six screws the tall skinny ones are the locking nuts so you unloosen these and once they're loose then you can make adjustments to these three fat shorter adjustment screws so make an adjustment to one at a time and you probably only need to move two of them to get it centered so i'm just going to guess and move this one right here and see what that did you can see why people get laser collimators because you don't have to keep going back and forth seem to be getting closer and you keep doing that until it's in the bullseye very close so maybe i only need to turn this one yes it's in the bullseye after you do that then you need to remember to tighten the tall skinny locking screws and go back and look one more time to make sure that didn't move the mirror and if it didn't didn't move you're all done you're all collimated it's that easy now we're going to collimate with the cheshire collimator which is similar to the collimation cap except that a cheshire has a 45 degree angled opening and it has crosshairs on this end to help you center everything other than that you do it pretty much the same way you use the collimation cap so again you start with the secondary mirror you put the collimation collimator facing the primary mirror like that and then it has a small opening just like the collimation cap and then you'll see the crosshairs and that will help you determine whether the secondary mirror is lined up but you it's the same thing it just has crosshairs so you should see the four clips holding the primary mirror and the secondary mirror just ignoring the primary for a minute it should be in the center of those crosshairs so <laughs> mine still is they, they don't move unless you you know really bang this thing around you shouldn't have to make any more adjustments to your secondary mirror after you make the initial ones when you first get it um, so my secondary mirror is in the crosshairs so now it's time to move to the primary mirror and so same thing you look for that black circle that is on the primary mirror it comes from the factory that way most of them do unless your your reflector is extremely old it might not and then you go to the back and like I said with the collimation cap you un loosen the tall skinny locking screws and just like with the collimation cap you make small adjustments to these fat short 
screws until that black dot in the center of the primary mirror is in the middle of those crosshairs. And when it is, you're all collimated. The last way to collimate is if you have a laser collimator. So I'm going to take out the Cheshire and put in the laser collimator. And the laser collimator has a laser. And so we have to turn it on and make sure that when you put the laser collimator in that the opening is facing the primary mirror like this. First thing you do, in case you might be way off, you point it to a white wall or something white to see if you see the laser coming out. If so, that means you're way off, but um, you shouldn't be that far off unless you dropped it or something. But otherwise, it's okay to look down the tube to look for the laser beam. If the laser beam is not in the center of the white picture that's on the laser collimator, then you need to move it until it is by using the hex wrench, as I discussed with the collimation cap. So it's the same concept. You're just trying to get the red dot created by the laser in the center of the white bullseye that's on the laser collimator. And you do that by turning, you should only have to turn two of these hex screws with your two millimeter hex wrench and not much either until, and, and you can do it while you're looking down the tube and you turn them until that red dot is in the middle of the white bullseye on the laser collimator and then you're done with the secondary mirror and then this is why people like laser collimators you don't have to keep going back and forth because you can collimate with a laser collimator by looking at that white bullseye on the laser collimator you go to the back of the telescope and you unlock the tall skinny ones and then you turn the short fat ones until the laser is in the center of the white bullseye on the laser collimator. Now, sounds great, doesn't it? A lot easier than using the collimation cap and the chest jar and going back and forth. However, it's not in the center <laughs> with this laser collimator because they're not always accurate. <laughs> Even though it's a little bit more effort, the collimation cap is more accurate than a laser collimator. So if you do this test like I just did, and you collimate with your collimation cap, and then you try to collimate with a laser collimator, and it says it's not collimated, go with the collimation cap, because it's correct. Because laser collimators can, can be off, unfortunately. So they're convenient, but <laughs> they're not always accurate. They're going to be accurate enough for uh, a visual observer. If you're using your Newtonian reflector for astrophotography, you, you probably want to be as accurate as possible and probably use the star test. <laughs> but for daytime collimation to maximize your time under the night sky, uh, that would be the recommended way would be to use the collimation cap. Laser collimators are great and convenient and they're good enough for visual observing. But if you notice a discrepancy, the collimation cap would be uh, the one I would rely on. So those are the three ways to collimate your Dobsonian telescope during the day. Collimation cap, Cheshire, laser collimator. Now you're all collimated and you're ready to have a fun time under the stars. That's it for now. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.